Hello, fellow Daz Studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you back to another tutorial. Now, today I want to show you something really cool that'll help you with a lot of your renders to make them customized. And that is to take any prop that has a screen and add your own customized image to it. Now, you may notice a lot of props come with their own image on a screen, and we can change that image to anything we want, and that's what I wanna show you today. Now, what's really cool is you don't need Photoshop. Heck, you don't even need GIMP to do this. Now, you can use GIMP if you want to, but I'm just gonna use straight out Microsoft Paint that comes right you know, on your computer when you purchase it. Now, I have shown you how to do this in a previous video where I talked about emissive lighting. And uh, honestly, I'm not sure why this video hasn't gotten more views, but you can see this computer screen has a customized picture. So I do show you kind of how to do it in this video, but this emissive lighting video is going to show you how to make this screen glow. See how it's um, glowing off of Milika's face and hands. Um, so watch this video. I really encourage it for emissive lighting, but it does have a little snippet of how you can add that image to your screen. So we're going to focus on the image in this video. Okay, so to start off with, I have Milika here in a nice kind of sci-fi scene set up, and I just added several props that have monitors, so we can add whatever we want to that monitor and customize it. Okay, so for the first thing that we're going to look at is going to be this big monitor. I added this big monitor because it just has kind of a generic image on it. You know, it looks like it has an x-ray and maybe an EKG or something like that with just some random sci-fi images. What we want to do is we want to customize this and add a picture to it that makes sense for our scene. So in order to do that, I'm going to double click it and once it's selected, I'm going to go to the surfaces. And under the surfaces, it just says large monitor. If we drop down, we're going to notice that there is a lot of components to this monitor. So this monitor has the arm, the base, says con, frame, housing, and so on. We have to find the screen. Now, on this prop, it doesn't actually say screen. So... I had to play around with it a little bit when I first started using this and I learned that the screen is actually this thing called light. And so I clicked on that and then when you go to diffuse, it'll bring up the diffuse color that shows you the image that is being displayed. So if we click on that, we can go to browse and when we go to browse, it's going to bring up the texture folder of the product that you're using. So this happens to be a, a Davo uh, prop and the texture, and it just shows you where it's located. And if you double click on that, you're gonna load that photo into the prop. And so you would think that I could just take any picture and put it in there. So here, this my avatar. I don't know why I always use this as an example, but let's just use this as an example. If I click on the avatar, it's going to put it on there, but you can see the proportions are all messed up. So we don't want to use the straight image. There is a little trick to this. What we're going to have to do, I'm just going to delete that. What we're going to have to do is go in and add our picture proportionally to the screen. So I'm gonna go back to the original. We're gonna go up to browse. 
I'm going to take the original image, right click it, and we're just going to open it with paint. All right, here it is in paint, and I'm just going to shrink it down. Like I said, you can do this in GIMP if you want to. I mean, but why make it harder? I mean, let's just keep this as simple as possible. So now I've got this in paint. I can then go to the folder where the picture I want is. I can right click on that picture, open it with paint as well. And then I can take my picture here and grab it. I'm just gonna grab most of it here. I don't have to grab the whole thing. I'm gonna hit Control Copy, Control C to copy. I'm gonna go to my screen here and I'm just gonna hit Control V, paste that in. You notice it's too small. So I'm gonna take this and we're just gonna adjust it. And how I'm gonna adjust it in paint is not by dragging it because that'll just pixelize it and everything. I'm gonna come up here and just increase this. Let's go to 150 and see what it looks like. Okay, that's close. So 150 was a little too small, so let's just go to 180. Okay, perfect. So see, now I've got my image, and I'm going to line it up. It's a little bigger, but it's, it's pretty good. We're going to line it up over the original image. Now, the reason why this um, won't work if you just cut and paste it, you see how the original image has white above it and below it. And so we have to put our new picture right over that original. Now when we do that, we want to file save it as a new image. All right? And I made a folder. I never save these in their original product folder. Don't save it in that original uh, texture folder. Uh, make your own file folder and then put it somewhere. So I just made a tutorials folder and I'm gonna uh, I can rename it anything I want but let's just keep it as the lamp screen and I'm just gonna name it lamp screen uh, one and I'm gonna hit save okay I'm gonna get out of paint and we're gonna go back to Daz studio I could hit cancel kind of refresh this um, but now I can add that picture right to my screen by clicking on it, going to Browse. I'm going to go to that folder that I created. And then here's my image. I just click on my image. And now the image is proportional to the screen. Beautiful. All right. Really cool, simple way to just change your prop and make it more realistic. Now, why this is so cool, is now I can go to any camera and see it's it's just on the screen. I love it. Okay, let's look at another prop. Now down here I've got this console and if you notice we've got a screen right here and if I hover over it it says it's a console station C3 monitor. We're gonna we're gonna put this same image of Milica on this screen as well. This is a little tricky um, because the screen, it just, um, it's, it's hard to figure out where the image is. So I'm gonna double click on this because it's this entire prop here. All of this is the same thing that I'm highlighting. So it's just this big console. It's called the console station. And the console station consists of a bunch of parts and pieces. So if I look at the, the surfaces of the console station, we're going to see that it has, look at this, a lot of stuff. And so this is, this is kind of crazy, but you've got to figure out, if I want to put this image on this screen, I've got to figure out where the image goes in the texture JPEG. And this is where it gets tricky. Our large screen was pretty easy because it was just that 
one tab that said light and I could just manipulate that and get my entire image onto that large screen. But now our texture image is all of this console. So if, if I select the console, and for example, if I just go to base and go to diffuse, there's my image. So that image is everything on this prop, all right? Um, and so we need to figure out where the image on this screen is gonna go. Now what's tricky is finding that screen in our big list. So I um, have been playing around with this and I, I noticed that it says that it is the C3 monitor. So I just scrolled down until I started finding CON3. So here's the base. And if I keep going down, you'll see that it's right here. It's actually the very last thing this con screen. So if I drop the menu down for this con three screen, I go to diffuse, you'll notice that there's no image and the diffuse color is black. I can turn that black to white and see now I can see that the screen is now being displayed as white. So I know I now have the correct part of the prop. Now the same thing goes here. If I just select my arrow, go to browse, find uh, my Milica girl. She's actually, the original is in my texture folder here. So see my original, she's right here. If I click on that, I don't get any correct proportions. See, it's that picture. See, here's the curtains. It's the same picture. You can see the little um, picture on the wall, but it doesn't match the screen. So I've got to go in and manipulate this. So to get the correct image on my screen here, I'm going to go back to this base, go to the diffuse, and I'm going to open up its original JPEG. So to do that, I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to go to browse and it would open up the original folder. Now I already have this saved in my tutorials. So here it is. I'm just going to click on the original, go to browse, and it's going to open up the original folder where this JPEG is for the console. Now I already did that and I saved it into my tutorial folder. So this is the original. I can open it up. Let's open it, right click, go to paint. And this is the original JPEG for the prop. So I'm going to save it in my tutorial folder as a new JPEG. And when we look at the image, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to take my screen, go to diffuse, and let's add that image to our screen. I'm just going to have to go to my tutorial folder and then let's add the original and just see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see it's doing the same thing. It's just displaying a partial picture, but now I can see kind of where that image is being displayed. So see this green like circle. If I go to my original JPEG, what's being displayed is right here. So see this little circle is what the screen is showing us with some of the um, green dials on the right and then some blue on the left. So what I have to do now is I have to go to paint and I'm going to have to put the image I want right here around the um, green little circle. So I can open up my image. I'm going to select it again. We're just going to go control copy. And now I'm going to go back to this image. I'm going to do control paste. And there is my image. Now I want to have it. It's actually a, probably a pretty good size. It might be a little bit too small, but if I um, kind of place it there, I can go back to Daz studio. See, I'm trying to get it into the screen. So we need to cover up some of that blue, that whole green thing and a little bit of the dials, those green dials. So if I go back into my 
Yeah, that looks um, maybe a little too big. I think it would probably be better as a little too big than a little too small. So I'm gonna put it right there. Let's take that, let's save it. We're gonna go File, Save as a JPEG. And then I'm gonna name this, um, let's just name it Screen Milica. Now, remember, I'm saving it in this new folder I made. I'm not saving it in the original product folder. If, and, and you have to change the name, all right? Don't keep the same name. You don't wanna overwrite your original. Let's go back to Daz Studio. And now let's take this screen. We're gonna go here, go to Browse, and then I'm gonna add the Milica here. All right, there it is. Nice screen. So now I've got it on both screens. Okay, something that I wanna show you that's really cool that um, I guess is a feature of Daz Studio 4.22 because in previous versions, uh, this didn't work, but it used to be that if I wanted to change this image, I would have to create a um, new image the same way and then save it as a different file. So let me show you, for example, if I wanted to add this YouTube symbol into the picture instead of Milica, I could um, add it in. Let's just add it into our picture. We'll go Control Copy. Then we'll go to the picture with Milica. All right, so you can see I added this YouTube logo instead of Milica. Now, it used to be that I would have to save this as a new file. If I didn't save it as a new file, Daz Studio wouldn't recognize it and it would keep the original Milica picture. And then when you tried to reload it, it would say that there was an error. But what I've discovered with our new Daz Studio 4.22 is that if I just go in and take this and save it, when I go back, it actually just converts it to the new saved picture. So that is super cool. Um, this was something that did not work properly in Daz 4.21 and earlier. I always had to make a um, list of pictures if I wanted to change them. So now it's just changing that picture based on the newest save, which is super cool. So see if I go back and I undo this, put Milica back, hit save, when I go into Daz Studio, she's back. There she is. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. It's pretty cool how you can do this. You can do this with any of your props. You can add pictures. Use uh, Microsoft Paint, make it easy for you. You can use Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, but um, I just stick with what I think is easiest and Microsoft Paint works beautifully for this. So I'm gonna set up a um, render. Okay, that looks decent. Let's just run this render. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hey, check out that emissive video because it's going to show you how you can take this screen and give it some illuminescence so that it produces light and makes your uh, render even more real. All right, I'm just going to render this bad boy up, use it as my thumbnail, and... Uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. We'll see you later.